The video of today is brought to you by gvgmall.com. Get your authorized Windows 10 Home Edition serial key for only $13. You can go even further and use my discount code to get 20% discount, making it only $11. The same applies to Office 2019 that you can get for the awesome price of $50. Hello guys, it's Shit Game Place, I'm Fabio Pisco and today I bring you a video that you have been waiting for a long time, I'm sure of that because many people have asked me uh, like Do a video about how to overclock your RAMs, do a RAM overclocking video, blah, 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 blah. And well, here I am doing it for you guys, so enjoy this video. We're all and well, cringiness apart, you need to understand one thing before overclocking. The thing, and the most important thing, is that the memories and the CPUs and the motherboards are not equal. Not, they, they just aren't equal. And for example, you have this RAM kit, for example a 3000 MHz RAM kit, and your friend has the same exact RAM kit on, for example, an Intel CPU, and that RAM kit may um, do higher frequencies than your RAM kit because you have a different motherboard, you have a different CPU and then even the same RAM kit um, with the same branding, with the same frequency, with the same timings may uh, not do and not have the same results on the same motherboard and same CPU so imagine you have your CPU and your motherboard and you buy a RAM kit then you buy another one which is supposed to be equal and one RAM kit for example may achieve a higher overclock than the other RAM kit. So not all RAM kits are equal, not all CPUs are equal because the CPUs also matter um, on the RAM overclocking because of the internal integrated, sorry, integrated memory controller but well that's the first base you need to understand. But before going more into the overclocking part Let's go to the basis and to the basics that you need to understand. See you soon. RAM means random access memory and DDR means double data rate. So DDR, for example, 3200 MHz will actually have a true frequency of 1600 MHz. But since it transfers data on both rising and falling edges of the clock signal, having two signals, four clock cycle of course, it is considered 3200 MHz. We currently have four generations of DDR RAM. DDR, the first one, was released back in 2000. In fact, my first PC ever used DDR 4000 MHz, not 4000, 400 MHz, and it was a Celeron, also 400 MHz, by the way. DDR2 was released back in 2003, still used in Intel Dual Cores, Core 2 Duo, some Core 2 Quads, uh, and for example, old AMD Athlons and Semprons. Not so easy to find nowadays, but still findable, if that's a word. <laughs> DDR3 was released back in 2007, and it is still vastly used. This happens mostly due to the CPU market stagnation that we had from 2011 to 2017, when Ryzen CPUs were launched. In that time, people with the 3rd and 4th generation of Intel processors weren't upgrading to the 6th or the 7th, since they knew it was not worth that much because they had to buy the CPU plus motherboard plus RAM kit for the same quad-core story, and AMD was offering nothing uh, that competed in terms of gaming performance back then. So that's the reason. DDR4 is the latest DDR we have currently available, and it was released in 2014. And yes, the time to release new tech is getting higher. DDR1 to DDR2 took 3 years, DDR2 to DDR3 took 4 years, and DDR3 to DDR4 took 7 freaking years, once again due to market stagnation. As for DDR5, it is expected to release in 2021. Still, in the RAM section, I want to clarify a thing, which is still a thing in 2019. Single channel versus multi channel. How exactly does that work after all? Simplifying things to the max, single channel means that RAMs are using one channel to connect with the CPU. Take it as a highway, for example, only one road. So one channel, a single channel. While dual channel will obviously be the RAMs using two channels to connect with the CPU, having double the bandwidth. 
The same applies to Quad Channel and Octa Channel, of course. You need a supported motherboard and CPU in order to run them. For example, having 4 RAMs on an Intel i7 8700K or a Ryzen 7 2700X won't make it Quad Channel, since the CPUs and motherboards won't support it. With 4 RAMs, for example, on these systems, you will be still using dual channel. You would simply have 2 RAMs for each supported channel. Another thing that people fail to understand is that RAMs are all different, and the same applies to CPUs. Apart from RAM, you have the CPU IMC, Integrated Memory Controller, which reads and writes into memory, simplifying things, of course, and like any piece of hardware, it has a limit. For example, Intel Core iARC is clearly different from Ryzen Arc in several aspects. One of them is the IMC, that for now it is stronger in the Intel Arc. For example, Ryzen IMCs can hold 4000 MHz RAM frequencies unless using really high voltages, while Intel IMCs usually can do that easily, with proper RAMs of course. So imagine that you bought, for example, a 4000 MHz CDR4 kit. You should be able to run it at 4000 MHz, right? Wrong! Even on Intel CPUs that may not work 100% of times, and on current gen Ryzen's you may have to reduce it to around, let's say, 3400 or 3600 MHz, but of course, you can always reduce timings, which matters a lot, in fact. And well, apart from this, you also have the fact that we have just three RAM chip manufacturers. They are Samsung, Hynix and Micron. That means that any RAM kit you buy, being it JSkill, Crucial, Kingston or any other, will have one of these three chip manufacturers inside. And there is no way, no way to know what chip you are buying unless you ask the manufacturer or unless they are pretty obviously according to the frequency and timings of the RAM. For example, 3200 MHz CL14 will be Samsung B die. That die will reach higher frequencies at lower latencies, hence the price. If you want to know what kind of chip you have inside your RAMs, you can use a software called Typhoon Burner, and it will tell you all you need to know about your RAMs. And well, since you know the basics now, let's go to the overclocking part. <sighs> <laughs> okay, now that you got the basics, at least I hope you got the basics, um, we can go to the overclocking part per se. And well, what can I say about this? Many people ask me, how do you reach such speeds? How do you reach such speeds? How do you reach such speeds at lower timings? Um, well, that's not that, that's not something that's really really hard. I mean. Well, I mean, first of all, um, it matters a lot, for for example, on your combination, for example, the RAM, CPU and motherboard combination, that matters a lot, of course, and matters a lot on the CPU, so for example, going to Intel CPUs may let you achieve a uh, higher frequency at lower timings than, for example, going with Ryzen CPUs, at least for now, of course, but even on Ryzen CPUs, I've been able to achieve some pretty cool timings, for example, with crucial memories. People say that, that Micron dies because uh, crucial RAMs usually use Micron dies. People say that Micron dies are pretty bad, and I do not think that way, because I have two RAMs, two RAM kits with Micron die, and for example, my uh, 2666 MHz CL17 can do 3000 MHz CL14 and it is a, mi a micron chip and I'm using my Ryzen 5 2600 um, also my another crucial tracer the RGB shit one uh, the crucial ballistics tracer 16 gigabytes kit uh, for example it is um, a 3000 MHz CL16 18 18 18 38 and I'm using 3200 MHz CL14 17 14 14 35 28, 28, um, so yeah, it depends a lot on the combination, for example, I, I learned that Asus motherboards do like Micron chips, the BIOS on the Asus motherboards like Micron chips, uh, so I bought Micron RAMs, anyway, the best RAMs you can get for Ryzen right now are Samsung B die, simple as that. The next thing that people need to understand is that RAM overclocking is a lot. And when I mean a lot, I really mean a lot about trial and error. For example, 
I go, I try one timing, for example, I, I focus on my objective. My objective with this 3000 MHz RAM kit was to get 3200 MHz. So, first I try the 3200 MHz and uh, I loosen the timings. I loosen the timings, so I let the 16, 18, 18, 18, whatever and try 3200 MHz. I tried it, I tested it, for example, gaming and doing stress tests, for example, uh, on ADA64, just an example. I tried it and it was okay. So, if it was okay, the next step is to reduce the latency because not just frequency is not just frequency that matters. Latency matters a lot. You need to find a combo, a combination of that. So the lower latencies you can get at the higher frequency that you can get also. So I focused on 3200 MHz. So now it was time to reduce the timings. And once again, it is about trial and error. I tried, for example, uh, I reduced from 16 to, to 15 and I saw it was okay. Then I reduced to 14 and I saw it was okay also. And then I reduced to 13. I saw that 13 wasn't working. So I let 14. Okay, simple. And you have to do that in all the timings one by one. If you want to, to really, if you want to really overclock step by step, you need to do that. You will lose hours, but that is it. That is it. I, I mean, that is it. It's frustrating sometimes, but in the end, uh, you get pretty happy to, to get the best you can out of your kit. And well, I mean, that's mostly it. What I can tell you and what I can say about overclocking, the, the tips I can give you, it's simple. If you want to overclock your RAM, first, first of all things, if you are using, for example, DDR4, simply, but simply go to the DDR voltage so ram voltage and apply 1.45 just 1.45 to start because okay many people may say 1.45 is very high it isn't it isn't so ddr4 rams can be cool up to 1.5 volts for daily usage so 1.45 volts is pretty okay for a decent overclock so let's start with that if you have for example a rising cpu you have to, to go and up the sock voltage to, let's say, 1.10 volts. Yes, 1.10 volts or 1.15 volts. That is the base to start the overclocking. Another thing on the timings is, for example, the comment rate. Um, and, for yes, let's start with the comment rate. So, the comment rate, you have 1T and 2T. So, 1T means that the memory will take one cycle to access, for example, the, um, the memory bank, while 2T means that the memory will take two cycles to access the memory bank. So, if you can, if you can use, for example, 1T, better. But there is a trade, for example, on Ryzen CPUs, which is the gear down mode. For example, if you have the gear down mode enabled on Ryzen CPUs, um, you'll get something, for example, like 1.5T. Imagine your RAMs can't achieve 1T, your RAMs can only achieve 2T, which is considerably uh, worse than 1T. So you can activate gear down mode, go to activate and then you can select the 1T. The gear mode down will be like 1.5T, uh, so you'll have 1.5T instead of 2T, uh, so still lower latency uh, and you may achieve way more stability and higher frequency. So use gear down mode because um, it is preferable to use gear down mode enabled with 1T than gear down mode disabled with 2T. The best scenario is gear down mode disabled with 1T, but not every kit of RAM can do it. So yeah, you need to find um, you keep, you need to find the um, you need to find the balance between them. That's that's it. And well, after all these small tips, you just need to do your thing, for example, and simply, but simply do the trial and error. Mark a speed you want to achieve, try to achieve that speed. If you can achieve that speed, then go and reduce the timings. If you can't, go to the max frequency you can and then start reducing the timings one by one. So reduce one timing, test. Reduce another timing, test. And that's on. That's the most and um, the most I can do for you guys, simply because it is really about trial and error, about that much. Guys, thanks a lot for watching one more time. 
really share the video hit like subscribe uh, share one more time if you can and leave a comment on the comment section if you have any kind of doubts or if you want to tell me uh, anything about this video go to the comment section and comment thanks a lot one more time for watching this video and see you in the next one